Uh, school was not a pleasure for, for me. Uh, oh, my, my father, um, because of his success, he, he was able to put his four kids through private school and, and I hated every second of it. Uh, it was actually the woodwork teacher, uh, which I thought was quite ironic, but he actually, uh, I remember him shouting at me in a lesson saying, um, don't know how your father can afford to send you here when he's only a baker. So I always judge people um, on, on that instinct, that gut feel, uh, and, it, and it doesn't let me down. And then I took the leap of faith and, and stepped out onto my own, um, and that's a whole new thing. Um, initially, when I set up on my own, I was just um, buying and, and, and trading land. Um, that and it, it was a, a, an amazingly uh, profitable uh, business. Um, until the banking crisis where suddenly everything stopped. What I hated about trading land was this lifestyle of feast famine. You know, I could literally have obscene amounts of money in my current account and two years later you could be thinking, how on earth am I going to feed the kids and pay the mortgage? I, I have never had a planning application where I've had nothing but support from the locals. You may get the occasional little tiny percentage, but predominantly it's uh, they, they resent you, they hate you. I've, I've had physical violence, I've been spat at, sworn at, hate campaigns, you name it. Wow. And, and that was the creation of Devasis because I realised that the British public hated development. So you've got to be certain that when you get that plan, you will get a planning permission and you will then be able to turn that to, to profit. So there is a huge amount of risk in, in, in development and, and you see failure as a learning opportunity. You, you'll learn mm. more from failure than you will from success. Mm. I used to have this very simple rule. If it makes a difference to my business, I will do it. If it doesn't, I won't. I would literally just focus on what would make a difference to the business. What can I do today that moves me forward? Success, I suppose, bedtime. At the end of each day, have I made a difference? I'm on a mission to help the world to see success differently. Through sharing the stories of our guests, I hope to inspire those that listen. This is the Different Hats podcast, produced by H2 Productions. I hope you can join us on this journey. Okay, I'm just going to say something about one of our sponsors, Rivervale. The world of cars, vans and minibuses is often a pain point for many of us. The hassle of finding the right vehicle, let alone looking after it, are all more things to add to our lists as busy people. Rivervale's mission is to make motoring manageable, and that's why they provide leasing, purchasing, servicing and vehicle management. So whether you have one family car or a fleet of vans for your business, Rivervale are your trusted vehicle supplier. Visit www rivervale.co.uk okay let's jump back to the podcast okay welcome to another episode of the podcast today my guest is a creative thinker with great lateral capacity and a very perceptive eye for profit opportunities and risk with over 25 years experience in residential housing industry i'm delighted to welcome the managing director of dev assist mr paul addison to the podcast paul thank, how thank, you doing very well very well good morning thank hey. you Delighted to have you on, mate. Very excited to be here. Yeah, it's great. Look, we um, we obviously worked together, known each other last year or so. Met at a few events, had a chat in Soho House that time, and I was like, oh, mate, got to come on the podcast and have a have a conversation. And here we are. I know. At, at few, last. Few, at last. I know. Yeah. I know. A few months mm-hmm. later. So look, we're gonna we're gonna kick off straight away. As always, we just start with our life in sixty seconds, and I just want to just give us a snapshot, sixty seconds, something about life growing up about your childhood that sort of shaped who sits in front of me today? I had a very fortunate childhood. Um, my father, who was a, he was a baker, um, but he had his own business uh, and he had done very, very well. It was a family firm that he had inherited and uh, that lifestyle that, that he created for, for us as kids, it, um, it, it, it can either be uh, a blessing or it can be a curse, but for me it set a benchmark that I want to achieve in business, um, and until I achieve that level or more, um, I would uh, keep keep pushing. So that that was my um, 
yeah, that was my moment, if you like, where my, my future was, was created for me. I love that, because I, I, I often, um, I, I always ask that, because I really think it's so important, like, what happens when we're growing up, it really does, like, shape our journey, as childhood, and, and, and all sorts of things. Um, and I, 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 lo- I love the fact when people have gone into business, and they've come from a family who have run their own business how that inspires them to to do it because mm. I, I, I must admit i was strange like, i never had that like for me growing up so it was the uh, I, I always said i've watched too much only fools and horses i think one, one of the <laughs> and I, i'll probably try to get in but then talk, talk to me a little bit more about that then that, that sort of like like lifestyle like, as, as a child at school what was it what, what was your school life uh, school was not a pleasure for, for me uh oh, my, my father um because of his success, he, he was able to put his four kids through private school, and and I hated every second of it. I think you know I, I was in that era where dyslexia wasn't captured, um, but it's only in sort of later years I've realised that myself and, and 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 many members of my family fall into that category. So I, I struggled with education, and I did resent school. Um, so school for me was a big battle. Um, and, and also taught me an awful lot about people because it was a very privileged school. Mm. Um, I remember a, uh, uh, it was actually the woodwork teacher, uh, which I thought was quite ironic, but he actually, uh, I remember him shouting at me in a lesson saying, um, don't know how your father can afford to send you here when he's only a baker. Um, and, that, and that created a real chip on my shoulder, actually, I think, which has also lived with me. It's just like, it doesn't matter who you are, whatever your background, you know, we're, we're all equal out there. But he felt because my dad was a tradesman, um, you know, I wasn't worthy of that position in, in that privileged school. So um, so I, I rebelled at school. I was a bit of a naughty boy. Uh, I, I went the other way and, uh, yeah, sort of uh, push, pushed and uh, couldn't wait to get out and get working. Really? That's so interesting. How ridiculous that a teacher would possibly yeah, which ironically was woodwork, which is a trade. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 of all things. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a oh, it, that, uh, you probably heard me talk on here a lot and I, about the education system. I, I, I always do. Just I've never actually been diagnosed with dyslexia, but I'll, a lot of traits I know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I should go and get tested one day, and I'm, I'm possibly on. Go, but I, I find it so fascinating when. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners are dyslexic. The thing that does me with this, with the education system, the way it's set up, it is set up for one type of yeah. person. To, yeah. And I just can't get my head around it. No. Like, and it's still a one size fits all. And, and it, it doesn't. Um, and, I, and I see it in my son. You know, I've, uh, my son now works for me. Yeah. Um, and as a result, I, I'm tougher on him um, than I am perhaps on other members of staff because of. I, you know the, yeah. the, the usual sort of uh, um, accusations of nepotism and all that. Yeah. But I've had many people work for me since since I set up the business. Some have come out of university with first degrees and all the rest of it. He hasn't. He was just like me. He's a carbon copy, yeah. um, and he didn't like education. He resented it. He, uh, <laughs> um, I, I could do another podcast on him, um, <laughs> but. Uh, he, he, he resented it and he rebelled. But out of all the people I've trained, he's one of the, the quickest to learn and the sharpest to spot risk. Um, so maybe there is something in the dyslexia that there's, there's, a, there's a gift that, yeah. that comes with it. But uh, so, yeah, so that the getting a first degree is not representation of how clever and how good somebody can be. So uh, I, 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 I love yeah. that. I, I, I really, for me, I, I echo that. I, I think my markets are only what they're at eight now. Um, and look, I've always said, because my wife's an academic, so she went to university. She's a, she's a lawyer, so she went to university, got a degree, etc. Um, I just, I, I, I was similar. I just, I done okay at school actually, mm. but I just didn't, I didn't respond that well. Didn't know what I was going to do. So didn't have that focus, and just didn't respond. That. So, but I, I say to my kids about that: like, if they want to go and be a lawyer or a doctor, then fine, you've got to take that path. If you don't, that university is not for everyone, right? No. And I think. Um, it is it, it f- f- and I, I guess as an employer, is that something that you like within your industry as well? The the grades, the the 
is that something that you would look at, or is it that you, you no. know I can train anyone and to, to do yeah. what I need to do? No. And it's more about all, all I can extract from a CV is really uh, the level of commitment that somebody has shown to maybe a previous job. Mm. You know, have they been there only three months? You know, which sort of for me is indicating they're a quite a flirtatious, flirt, a flirtatious, a shush a character. <laughs> um, but really, for me, it's it's all about looking between in someone's eyes yeah. and, and and assessing the character. So yeah. I always judge people um, on on that instinct, that gut feel, yeah. uh, and it, and it doesn't let me down. I love that. I love that. And I, f- I actually think for me, watching, following people on social media, and I think I, I, tell me what you you think about it. But I, I think that actually society is starting to change and employers are starting to change again. and actually it is more about per- a person's attitude and yeah. their ability to work hard or um, as opposed to looking at because I remember I remember working in my early 20s I worked for an, one of the big American law firms and they only employed people from Oxford and Cambridge yeah, they had yeah. To go and I'm, you look at that and go but a lot of them people would come in I, I was I was admin like, so I was working yeah, in a yeah, print yeah. room type thing and they'd come in and their level of common sense, very don't get me yeah, wrong, yeah. very highly intelligent academically. Yes. Didn't know how to turn a printer on and pre- no. press a green button to no. print a bit of paper. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. simple things and that's so life skills and that's why I think with the education system, like things like oh, I spoke to someone recently on here and we're talking about more about life skills and stuff like that that we if we could educate our children in that sense, mm. of course they've got to get some form of fundamentals right yes but how much better if we were teaching them teaching them about you know financial education for example oh, absolutely Pre- preparing them for the big world yeah yeah what's vat how does it work how do you claim it back yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That, that free what? little tax service we do for the government yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is, it's, it's, and it's great to hear i guess from the more more guests i get on that you know, majority obviously all business owners and that this is the type of thing that that we're talking about that yeah. they are going I'm looking at you know I, I, it's not about the CV necessarily it's about getting that person in front of me and sitting down and if they got the right attitude and I'll, I'll yeah. take them forward and I think so 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 then t- so, so you come out of school you couldn't go so talk to me about them, them early that early career and when you first got out of I, uh, I was was there ever an opportunity to take over the family business? Was that it was? It was very yeah. much there, but I was the youngest of, of, of four siblings. Oh, wow. My brother was a very, very gifted baker and, oh. and confectioner, um, and it, he was just set to take it over. I was not interested. Really? Uh, after college, I, I did a few months there uh, I think my father wanted to sack me every day um, <laughs> no I, I had my mind set on, on property I enjoyed I, I, I had a um, I liked architecture I liked the design um, so without many qualifications behind me uh, I was fortunate enough to, to see an advert for a job uh, for, as a trainee land buyer for, for Crest Homes um, and that I just looked at it and I was tunnel vision. I want this job. I'm right. going to get this job. And there was a huge, there was hundreds and hundreds of applicants for it. But I managed to get over that that enthusiasm and and, and that I would give them everything if they gave me that opportunity. And, and fortunately, I got that opportunity and had probably one of the best apprenticeships in land. So it was an apprenticeship? Then. Yeah, it was. And, and, and it, land is a... Acquisition is a it's a it's a jack of all trades, master of none. You've got to understand uh, some aspect or quite a lot of aspects of the of the law, of the title of the land, mm. um, the covenants, the easements, etc., and understand all of that as well as contract formation, how to negotiate uh, a, a good contract that works for both sides. You've got to understand the engineering, the ground, the sales, the marketing. So you become a jack of all trades before mm. you put that deal together and you present it to the main board and say, I think we should buy this site because of X and yeah. and, uh, and that was a and that was a tough presentation at Crest. You know, it was brutal. All of your deals were, were ripped apart by the um, the management structure there. It was almost like presenting something to the uh, the dragon's den. Yeah. Um, but once your deal got through, you knew that that uh, process that they had of of risk elimination and risk assessment would 
produce a very profitable site. We never messed up at Crest. We always, always mm -hmm. made our margin or more on every single development that, that we uh, we took on. So uh, <clears throat> for me, that was, I, I was so lucky. I worked with some of the industry best. Uh, and then after Crest, I ended up um, working at, at, at Charles Church, um, which in its time, um, and certainly was in the latter years that I was there, was one of the more creative house builders. And that, that suited me better. Box building of standard house types didn't really fit with me. I wanted to see a piece of land and create and, and be part of that design process. So it's a part of like, the vision, like seeing exactly. a piece of land. And, uh, yeah, so to have it in my head and, and to assess what is going to be the most profitable route for the for the business obviously that's critical but equally what's going to create the easiest planning ride you know you've got to look at the design mm -hmm. and to make sure that something fits in into uh, in, into the vernacular of wherever you're looking to build so mm -hmm. um, so Charles Church I was there for uh, many many years I think it was 12 to 15 odd years and ended up as the uh, director of land and planning uh, for, for the southeast uh, and that was uh, a really happy time for me. I, I was well looked after financially. That gave me the real sort of uh, sort of stepping uh, and, and sort of um, confidence to ultimately set up on my own. Yeah. After after Charles Church, I, I spent three years running a company for uh, a house builder, and then I took the leap of faith and, and mm -hmm. stepped out onto my own. Um, and that's a whole new thing. Um, <laughs> you know what it's like when, when, you, when you're paddling your own canoe yeah. and you step out and you realize there's not going to be that guaranteed paycheck at the end of the month and you've yeah. got to cash flow everything and still feed the kids and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah so that, that was uh, uh, the next part, if you like, of my, of my story. Yeah. But, um, but and, and I guess, like, did, did you see them, them 15 years and the, the, the time prior to that? Was there always in the back of, as you alluded to a little bit earlier, was there always in the back of your mind, I'm going to do something on my own? Absolutely. Always. This was always going to be always the, the plan. Just I didn't know that. what. Yeah. Um, luck, fortunately, after. Did you always think it was going to be something in? It would be something important. Oh, it would be. Uh, yeah, or, absolutely. My yeah, whole yeah. experience, it my was, whole career was destined to stay in and around and the land and planning uh, yeah. subject. Um, initially, when I set up on my own, I was just. Um, buying and, and, and trading land. Mm. Um, that and it, it was a, a, an amazingly uh, profitable uh, business um, until the banking crisis where suddenly <laughs> everything stopped uh, yeah. and nobody was buying land. People were trying to offload land and nobody was there to buy it. So that, that stopped me in my tracks. But uh, it was, again, a, whilst a worrying time, it actually turned out to be the, the, the critical moment because I... What I hated about trading land was this lifestyle of feast famine. You know, mm -hmm. I could literally have obscene amounts of money in my current account, and two years mm -hmm. later, you could be thinking, how on earth am I going to feed the kids and pay the mortgage? Wow. Um, so it wow. really was so up and down. So I always had this dream of creating a business that was a dripping tap, mm -hmm. something that I could regularly rely on and that was going to make money every single month, 12 months a year. Um, and because I had the time on my hand, that was where I was able to create Devasist, which was based upon my experience of promoting land for mm -hmm. development because every time I submitted a planning application uh, the natives went absolutely berserk um, the level of hostility that you will get from from locals when you put in a planning application for development is, is huge mm -hmm. I have never ever and I have done hundreds and hundreds of sites over my career uh, I have never had a planning application where I've had nothing but support from the locals you may get the occasional little tiny percentage but mm. predominantly it's uh, they, they resent you they hate you I've, I've had physical violence I've been spat at sworn out hate campaigns you name it wow. and, and that was the creation of Devasis because I realized that the British public hated development. So if I could create a product, a report that educated them about what development risks exists in and around the property that they intend to purchase, then they've got an insight into the future, a little bit of crystal ball gazing. Um, and what they can't see it, I can see it. it for mm -hmm. me, it sticks out like a sore thumb because I've been used to buying land and mm -hmm. creating these sites. And uh, so th that's where it all started from that little sort of three o'clock in the morning epiphany where I woke up and thought, this could be a good idea. And, uh, and here we are today. I love that. 
I'm keen. I've got a couple of things I want to touch on. One, the the resistance from the general public. What, what, what's the, what's the main thing? Is it change? Don't change. Like, just don't want just to simply change. change. Really? Yeah. If you can actually sit down with a, a lot of these people and actually explain that. Um, the, the change is it's not going to everyone says oh it's going to reduce the value of my property it doesn't I've never had a development that's reduced the value of properties in an area <laughs> quite the opposite if yeah. anything it, it brings them up yeah. um, but people are very scared of change and, and equally you know I'm not um, <sighs> unsympathetic to the poor person that has bought a property with beautiful views over open fields mm. and they fell in love with it and that's what they saw when they spent 30 seconds viewing that property mm. and fell in love with it and, and committed hundreds of thousands of pounds to purchase only for me to come along and say well actually I'm planning to build 200 houses on that field mm. so um, so being able to pre-warn people what is happening and give them the opportunity to make a grown-up decision do we continue with this purchase or yeah. do we pull out um, and and that's what we've done and and we have a um, I, I'm really proud because I've actually you know we, we I've turned if you like from the poacher to the gamekeeper I'm now helping the public yeah. look at locations th through the eyes of a developer uh, and uh, and as a result of that we have prevented hundreds and probably now thousands of people from making um, big mistakes yeah. um, Wow. And I, the, the, the other thing I really take from listening to you, you talk, and even back to the time when we, I guess, when, when we had a coffee at Soho House as well, like, you, you, you can tell you that you've obviously got a passion for what you do, right? Mm. Like, f for me, whatever it is that we do in life, something that lights you up, you can tell when someone's, that yeah. they love what they do and their yeah, passion. Yeah. And, What's interesting, actually, just from our talk so far today, I didn't realise as much that your your path going into property, going into that at such an early age, that that's what you knew that you, I, yeah. I want to be involved in this yeah. in some way, shape or form. Yeah. I want to be involved in, in that. And I guess back to having uh, kids, I suppose, that that's what we want for them, isn't it? Just to... Yes. Because to, what, what was your... I'd be interested to know what your dad's take was on it then when, obviously, that... <laughs> when you worked at the bakers for a little bit, like the same for you, but then you said, oh, I'm going to go into this, uh, this ever. Did, did he know that you'd potentially go and run your own business eventually, or had you spoke about that? What was um, he knew I was very ambitious, mm -hmm. and, and in the same way that I look at my own son, uh, I knew my son was not academically gifted. Mm -hmm. I knew he would struggle, he ADHD, dyslexia, mm -hmm. and he didn't fit, and, and the biggest irony was I made the stupidest of decisions, which was I put him through the private system. Uh, and he had exactly the same uh, exit <laughs> that, that I had, which was he just didn't fit. Um, I wish I'd have kept the money and gift, gifted it to him as a, as a deposit for his first, first <laughs> flat. Um, but yeah, Toby is, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And in spite of his lack of academic academic abilities he does not worry me he, he's he's got the chat he's got the, he's got the gift and he's got that tunnel vision he is just like me so uh he uh, yeah doesn't worry me at all he's he's going to be successful and and I, and I guess and that's what my dad could see in dad, me yeah. yeah 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 just knew that you'd be because i guess like, with, with everything aside actually whatever whatever industry we're in, whatever business we're in, whatever we do in life in our career, if we can talk to people, if you can have a conversation with someone, people buy from people, if you're able to articulate, you're able to build relationships, yes. whatever that looks yeah. like. And I guess especially from your point of view, the, with the dealings that you had done in, within, in, in the property market and being able to, just being able to talk to people and able to have that communication level, that gets you so far. It? Oh, it, it's it's everything, mm -hmm. um, and it was something I learned uh, about myself through uh, the the trauma of COVID. Um, that whole period, um, I was still able to run the business, uh, albeit in a very different way. But the bit I've missed the most was the people. Um, we we were we were making more money than we ever had. But that didn't tickle me. <laughs> that didn't excite me every morning. And I missed 
the bits of of being out out there seeing you you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and the people i've met in 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 the industry some of them are just really nice people yeah. um i was always, i was one of the things i was taught at, at crest about sort of the relationships that you build you see you know some people you might meet for a beer some people you'll take out for lunch some people you'll take out for fine dining yeah. and and that's the level you know you meet some people that just become such close friends yeah. that working with them is a, is a pleasure yeah. uh, and that's what i miss the most during yeah. the the pandemic I, I literally, I could not agree with you more. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm very much as we we both spoke about. Before, I'm, we're very similar, very much a people person. Love, I love being around people and having that. And I, for me, as tough as COVID was for the business, actually, both businesses really hit hard for me, and that was a, a struggle. What I, exactly that? What I missed was just not being around. Not being around people like our, our mutual friend Ryan Hill, who, yes, uh, with the yeah. best of British events, yeah. the amazing ones that we both obviously where we met and, yeah. and what we we both attend regularly. I, I still I still remember, and I've had him on the podcast. I still remember that first best of British at the Grand. I think John Barnes. It was five hundred people yeah. in the Grand, yeah. and that feeling of euphoria that we looked back. There was a lot of hugging We're that back. day, yeah. and there was a lot because there was a point where we were thinking, are we ever going to get back to that? Uh, yeah. Wasn't it? It was a, a, a quite a, a worrying time, but just a, a point of. Well, it was of, a worrying time. Yeah, of, the, of course, of, 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 uh, very yeah. much so. Yeah, yeah. But I think like afterwards, when you go, just are we ever gonna? I still remember my brother messaging me. We were both went to Nebworth Park to see Oasis, and it was oh, the twenty fifth wow. year anniversary. <laughs> and I remember him going, I can "Imagine like you right in a smack in the middle of lockdown. We didn't know what was going to happen." Going, I wonder if that's where we're ever going to get to that again. And like, yeah. and there was that fear, wasn't there, that we yeah. we, we, we wouldn't. But it's interesting you mentioned that about uh, just being around people and because people buy people and in business, yeah. if we can. That, that's, build that, relationships. That, that's the pleasure yeah. you know yeah we all have to make money yeah. but and yes we all watch the cash flow but ultimately you've got to enjoy your work yeah. and and i do and, yeah. and i and, uh, and it's because of the people i work with yeah. um, i like well, look we, we don't, i want i'm gonna we're gonna interject with the, with the next life in 60 seconds i want to talk about you've sort of hinted on a couple of challenges you spoke about um Obviously, banking crisis, and then yes. talk alluded a little bit to COVID, but just we're delving into a little bit further after. But just in sixty seconds, tell me about over that your career, life, biggest challenge, what you've learned from that. Cash flow <laughs> <laughs> sounds so corny, isn't it? Because yeah. everyone is goes, you know, cash flow, cash flow. But, but um, yeah, there, there's been moments in my career where I and. It was, it was fact, it was when I set up the first business, the land trading business. Mm. Uh, I was fortunate to have an investor. Um, and we were 50-50 in the business. Um, he put up the risk money. Um, I put up the sites and the effort. But I had to cash flow myself. And mm. as I say, rather unwisely had put my kids through the, the private system. Um, I remember a moment where I was literally gonna one month away from being out of money all my savings everything i'd put aside to create this business was going to be gone um and i couldn't i wouldn't have been able to pay the school fees i wouldn't have been able to pay the mortgage i wouldn't have been able to put food on the table i was i was just a bag of nerves um and uh i remember where i was i was going to a gym um and I, I could almost walk you to the paving slab that I was on when my phone rang and it was my uh, planning consultant, uh, Brian, and he phoned me up to say we had just won the appeal on one of our planning applications. And so I went from literally zero to the next week having uh, an obscene amount of money because I sold the site straight on mm. and, and that we, we, we exchanged contracts and completed and took our profit within seven days and had this obscene amount of money sitting in my bank account. It, 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 was, it was just such wow. a opportune time. It was just literally where everything was, uh, um, yeah, if, if there was such a thing, but yeah. the, the angels were on my side that day. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that, that was a very vivid, vivid memory for me. Mm. Um, where and it could have gone the other way, of course. Mm. I could have fallen to my knees, and I've you know we've all had moments in business where you get that squeeze, yeah. uh, but that was not a squeeze. That was literally on the edge 
of my seat. Um, and ever since then, uh, I've yeah I've had the odd little squeeze every now and the banking crisis yeah. etc. But have managed to, um, to to come through. So yeah. That, that was my moment. That wasn't 60 seconds at all, No, was but we're, we're, <laughs> mate, we're, there's an, oh, wow, wow, wow. Mm. And, oh, but there's such a, a, would you describe yourself as an optimist? Mm. Yes, absolutely, mm. yeah. Live optimistically. Mm. And I'm optimistic with people. Mm. may get a gut feel on people, but I'd rather be optimistic with them than, than rule them out and then... Mm. Um, you know, let, let's come and review this another day. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely, you have to live optimistically. Yeah. I, I think 100%, because there's so, so many people who have sat in that chair and, and, and spoke to me and, and, and we talk about their journeys. And, there's, and that's part, part of the process of growing a business and part of the process of being successful or living your life in some way, there's, there will be those challenges. Hence why I always chuck that in there, that challenge, because there's going to be things that we face. We face that ad- adversity and it's how we, I guess, how we cope with that, how we how we react to things is what makes us the people we are, isn't it? And, yes. and like you said, you, you hope from whether they be failures or whether, uh, like you say, they just be challenges that you face, we we hope that we learn something from them mm. that we take into that next period and we do it a little bit differently. Yes. It's our worst, whatever, but we, we, we try and learn from them. But, yeah, it's so, um, it's so interesting to me, like them, them periods of time where, like you say, when you're really up against it, I have to still have that, somehow dig deep and have that self-belief yeah that oh you, you, you've got to believe that you can do it um and without it if you if you don't have of all the the the, the business sort of things that are that, that, that i've been involved in and and every site is is a business yeah, every yeah, every yeah. development site i buy unless you've got that absolute 100 percent feeling that yeah i can manage this one through and i can turn this to profit if you don't get that 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 warm fuzzy feeling, it's, it's telling you something. Walk away. Walk and do away. You, do you, would you say that you you always trust your gut? Is that your? I do. Is that your? I've, I've taught myself, and where because and in you, the part, is that something you learn over the yeah, years? And and in the part and where my gut, where I've gone against that gut feel, really, I can look back and go. There's a reason why there was a bit of failure in that. In that, yeah. you know, I may not have got planning permission on something, yeah. and and I can look back and think I could have spotted that. I could have. So, so with that, that was very much my earlier career. So, mm-hmm. so now I very much, yeah, I, I, I always listen to my gut. Yeah. I do sleep on things, um, and see how I feel about them in the morning. It's yeah. uh, good advice. And uh, again, uh, I'm, I'd be really interested because you're just the nature of of the business and what you've been involved with over the years like your I guess your view of risk like as, as entrepreneurs as business owners we've got to have an element of risk haven't we yes you start a business whatever that looks like but your your level of risk is that not a lot higher just purely on the nature of oh the it's, industry it, in, in development yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, huge yeah. because you are um, unlike other businesses, you know, let, let's take the, the greengrocer. You know, you can go and buy wholesale, and you've got four or five days to sell those products before they go off. But you know your customer base, and you will sell and you will make a profit. Mm. With with land, in between getting planning permission and and oh sorry, in between buying and getting a profit, you've got the local authority. So you've got bureaucrats deciding whether you should have planning permission on this and then it goes to the committee and you've got loads of locally elected members who are there to represent those local nimbies um, <laughs> who don't want this development so it's a it, it's it's a very risk and it, it's it's very capital in, in intensive so the money you have to put up to get your architects together your 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 planning consultants your ecologists your highway consultants your design and access statement um water neutrality is the new one that that's being discussed mm. um how green is the development you you have reports coming out of your ears um you can come up with uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds that you are risking and that's unfundable that's got to be just hard cash banks won't fund that 
So you've got to be certain that when you get that plan, you will get a planning permission mm. and you will then be able to turn that to, to profit. So there is a huge amount of risk in, in, in development. Um, uh, people often get very envious of developers because they've always got these visions of cigar smoking, Bentley driving, um, and it, it's not like that. You know, yeah. They are just like any other business, but you're dealing with big sums of money. It's you say with so much in life, isn't it, that... that Sometimes the higher the risk, the higher the yeah, the risk reward. reward. Yeah, it's the same yeah. with anything, isn't yeah. it? You can go. Well, I'm going to start a, a small business yes. and I'm going to put up X amount, but yeah. I've got my little safety net, and if this doesn't go right, yeah. then I'm okay. Yeah. But actually, it, it was yeah, it was great. Yeah. And when I set up on my own, it was really kind to me. Um, I, I had uh, a, a lovely period of time, seven years of um, money was no issue. Um, and I could do lovely things. I, could, you know, I got into horses and uh, uh, and other things. And uh, yeah, it was it was a lovely time. Mm. But like all good things, it comes to an end. And the banking <laughs> crisis was the yeah. was my end of, of that period. T- tell me, talk me a little bit about that then. The, the, the banking crisis. What like that period of time? I guess from uh, your mindset point of view, or where you were in. It literally in, it stopped uh, land dead. Um, for the small, medium-sized house builders, mm. which was really the sort of the the, the, the part of the mm. the world where I sat, uh, because I was buying and mm. trade to to the small, medium-sized uh, developers, the banks, the funding, it, most of that sector had either come from Iceland or it had come through the Irish banks predominantly. So mm. the, they were heavily, heavily invested into development, and that all got pulled straight away. So we lost funding in that sector. Um, The only people really who could see out the storm uh, was the big, big corporates, uh, the Cress Nicholson's, the Taylor Wimpies, the Persimmons Mm. of of this world. And even they were critically hit, you know, their shares just absolutely plummeted. And and I know for a fact, because I won't mention which one, but I was pulled in as a consultant on one of the major corporates to decide whether they should call in the debt. uh, fortunately, they didn't, and, that, and they traded them through the the bad period. Um, so yeah, that that it, it was it was really tough for Scary. house building, and that, that's where again, you know, when people get green eyes of developers making all this money, mm. you know, you are literally only a couple of months away from a crisis. You know, if you suddenly go into a recession, and suddenly your sales values that you predict your these houses that you're going to be selling in 18 months, 24 months time, mm. and you're watching them go down in value each month, and they're not even built yet. Um, it's a very worrying, can be a very worrying industry to be in. Like you said, people's perception, this is why it's so interesting to have a conversation with you, I guess, about it, because people's perception, you're right, of probably the, is exactly that multi-millionaires driving mm-hmm. around in your in Bentleys and doing all but the, it's a bit like, like I've alluded to no matter what business you're in there's going to be periods during your business journey where you're shit, I've got I've got the, I've got the wage bill to pay next yeah. next week yeah the, the amount of times I can't tell you that, that you're <laughs> you know you're sometimes living hand to mouth depending on where yes. where you, where, yeah. where you are yeah. in your yeah. business journey but there's points that you're going actually I'm living literally hand to I'm waiting on that contract to come in to pay yeah. that thing to pay um, that invoice yeah. to do that and that's a that's why I wanted to get out of development yeah and sure, wanted sure, to sure. create Devasist because um yeah, when you've got teams of people and, and they've got mortgages and they've got yeah. their kids to feed and you know you have to pay them first. Yeah. You pay your team yeah. and then what, what's left, there might be a little bit of the, the pie left for me to nibble on. Um, yeah, yeah, so uh, I, I don't miss those days. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I'll bet. And I, I guess the other, the other great thing as well, listening to you talk and your, and your story, is that, that it's the couple of things, the vision, that mm. you've had right from an, I guess quite an early age in in within the land and and seeing something kind of but actually that that out of things that adversity or tough times or whatever that you spot an opportunity as well again like you said man mm. they've assisted up see, seeing that gap or seeing something yes yeah. just I guess I guess seeing things slightly different to how other people would yeah see them I yes guess is a, a, I is do a, believe that that. Uh, back to d- dyslexia, I think it, it gives you a different way of viewing mm. things. And you do think, I do think laterally. Mm. Um, um, 
and I do think creatively. Mm. Um, and that's where, with Devasist, I knew that there was the, there was a seed there that I could push, and it took probably two years of development and talking to people, meeting people in an industry that I hadn't really met anybody. So I've had to learn a whole industry when I created the business. Mm. But here we are, you know, what is it, nearly 12, nearly 12 years on. Mm. Um, and we've made our mark in that industry, you know, and we have created, we're still the only provider of our service. Um, so to be able to take something from literally a seed and grow it into that oak tree, um, I am deeply proud yeah. of, of what we do and I, and, and I you know I've got to mention my team um, the team that I've got uh, they are fantastic we've got, I've got the dream team at the moment yeah. and everybody fits a, a certain you know t- everybody's a square peg in a square hole <laughs> they've all got their own little skills that make the team so so wonderful yeah. Um, so yeah very proud of what we've got now because we, obviously we yeah I think because it was just was I think we done um, February. We done the front cover feature. Yes, for, yeah, for, for SBT, um, and it had just been ten years, isn't it? I think it was that's in right. November. That's right. Been yes. ten years. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it just yes. come so up. Yes, so yes, yeah, yes, so yes. it would be. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. that's uh, that's incredible. And, and again, like that, that that, like you said, that initial, just that initial light bulb mark. This could potentially yeah. any you are. I knew well. straight away it would it work. Bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it was getting that audience, and and obviously you know I rely now my 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 client base are solicitors, yeah, sure, so sure. I need to speak to solicitors yeah. to tell them you know what a wonderful service we can provide for them and their clients, yeah, yeah, um, sure. and that so so creating um, or identifying a problem and a solution at the same time that's mm-hmm. been quite a hard sell. So, you know, it's certainly not an overnight success, but once we get solicitors using our service and they realize what we can do for them in terms of risk elimination and, and, you know, getting their PI swerved towards our PI um, and enabling their purchasers to look at the the property of their dreams, but look at it eyes wide open. Um, Once they start using us, they use us all the time and they come back to us. And that's where we've created that dripping tap. Um, uh, and they come back and they use us every month and the month after that and the month after that. So as long as people are buying houses, which they will in this tiny little island that we are, mm. um, we're always going to have uh, more demand than supply. Um, and as long as we've got that, I, I, I've got a business. That's brilliant. And, and like you say, to go, and what's really interesting actually, to go from one extreme, I guess, where you've got some, where there's lots of risk and and, and then you got that reward to that to have created almost say bulletproof no business I guess is yes. bulletproof but, yes. but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but as close as you're going to get yeah. you know you're wearing some good armour at the moment I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you, I, I can to sleep at, my, at <laughs> night now <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and I can shut my eyes and relax and, and I can not turn up in, into the office yeah. and know that the team are going to look for it but to get that has taken 11 years of hard graft. Yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. did not happen overnight. Uh, and we've still got a long way to go. Yeah. You know, we've still got a massive, massive market to go and sell to. Um, so, you know, the, the, yeah, I guess you, the dreams. Like, just even scratching the surface of some of like, the amount of law firms out there and the amount yeah. of yeah. people that don't know about your That's right, there's still loads still, out there. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, I'm still meeting. Only on Friday, when, you know, when we were, mm. you know, some of the guests on my table. Um, were people that hadn't heard of our service yes. and right. you know but that they will become clients very soon yeah. uh, as soon as i get in front of a solicitor and explain what we do it's like oh, oh okay i get this now yeah. uh, and and that's how we we, we grow amazing love that love that i, w- I, w- I want to you, you did talk a little bit about um covid this dinner and i yeah. I'd, I'd just be i'd be keen just to what 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 happened to the business during that period? What what what, <laughs> what was your, like for for you as a business owner? What was your take on it? Talk to me a little bit about that that period. Oh, it was absolute panic. Yeah. You know, from from for want of a better word, the 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 arrogance of you know this dripping tap and yeah. oh it's going to keep dripping and not worry about it. And then suddenly that got thrown across us, and we saw Italy shut down and. And I could see this coming. Um, so I put everybody on 
uh, working from home, we shut down the office. So we were ahead of the curve on that one. So mm. we were already set up for when the lockdown hit. But in terms of the business, um, I initially was, was full of fear. Yeah. Did not know where, you know, how can you have a housing market where people are locked in their homes? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things it taught me about the London market, which it, for the first couple of months kept us going, um, was that there are still properties in, you know, Lon London is, is not a, an English market at all. Yeah. It is international. And there were still properties changing, changing hands, at huge sums of money um, with people who weren't even viewing them. Uh, so that that kept us going, but obviously our uh, our turnover dropped massively. You know, yeah. we're, we're probably by two thirds wow. um, for those first few months, and then Rishi Sunak announced his um, his package, which. Um, I will give credit where it's due, and I don't like giving credit to the current Conservative <laughs> yeah. government about anything, yeah. but th that package for, for my type of business, mm. it, it helped. It did help wow. massively, yeah. and obviously, and, and we actually went from complete fear to, to a gluttony, um, a, mm. al almost an embarrassment of riches, you know, because the market went crazy. Um, the stamp duty was re removed, yeah. and it created a huge run uh, on, on the property market. And yeah, we were we, we we had a very comfortable time, and I say that um, with an awful lot of feel and love for some of my friends in other businesses who didn't have uh, such a nice time. Uh, um, for the, certainly those in the leisure industry, and our, and our good joint yeah. friend Ryan, who had yeah, just set yeah, up yeah. an event business <laughs> <laughs> just as we go into lockdown. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I really feel for those people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was very kind to us. Yeah. Oh my yes, that's good to hear. That is good to hear. And then I, I get, what, what to, let's. T I want to touch then on the, just what well, we've got you here and your expert. What the property market now? What talk to me a bit about where you see it now, where you see it going in the next. It, it's it's for us. It's um, we we sell our reports across England yeah. and Wales, so we're we're a barometer of what happened, if you like, in last last week. Mm. So somebody's gone out, viewed a house, agreed to buy it. Solicitors are instructed. The solicitor then orders one of our reports. So we're quite sort of current, yeah, yeah, if you yeah, like. Sure. The, the, uh, we're only sort of a week out of date, and at the moment we are seeing an uptake, um, more so in the southeast, mm. which is where the dominance of, uh, yeah. of our income is generated um, and over towards East Anglia you know the pockets of wealth really anything mm. sort of south of Oxford the market is moving and it is moving up again um, prior to that over the summer we did see a decrease mm. um, but I think to have a stable base rate and that's the first time we've seen that in what was it 15 movements I think yeah, we've had yeah. on the base ra base rate um, that stability that we're now seeing is creating some certainty mm. uh, for, for people buying and as I said earlier the, the there is still more demand than yeah, we have sure. supply so I see the market it, it's not running away with itself it, yeah. it, it will continue to be steady I think until we see the next election mm. um, and then post that I think more steadiness. Uh, I just don't see it running away with itself. Um, how this helps first-time buyers is uh, a big question because even I look at property values and just it, you know here we are in the southeast and it's horrendous. Yeah. It is horrendous. Getting people on that ladder is 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 bordering on impossible. Um, and yet there is still massive demand out there for for every property that comes onto the market. It's crazy, isn't it? You're right. You do ask, well, oh, where, where, where's it going to be in 15 years' time when me when me kids want to buy a property? And what does that like? Because if they were at the age of buying a property now, you go, how the hell would they be oh, able to get on that yeah. get on that market? It is just it's, it's just such yeah. a such a tough thing. But like you said, it's uh, but it, it, so much in property is so cyclical. You know? What, yes. What, yeah. It is cyclical, but in the southeast, it's very different. We yeah. are a whole different world, yeah. and you know, and you're 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 looking comparative, if you like. When I was in my early twenties, when I was sort of buying my first property, and it was genuinely, you know, three times your salary. Yeah. Um, now you're you're looking really what they need is multiples of twelve. 
Um, so we are not comparing apples with apples. It is very, <laughs> yeah. very different for yeah. the youngsters today uh, than it was uh, back in my time. Yeah. And 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 look, um, hopefully we will never go. I mean, I, I still remember prior to the prior to the banking crisis. I still remember. I was a. Uh, I almost bought my um, nan's property in Leytonstone. This was when I just the start of my business journey, right? So I'm looking at what am I going to do for business? And I'm like, I'm going to, and it was a, f- it was a house just down the road from Leytonstone um, High Street um, Tube Station. So this was 2007. Um, my uncle lived upstairs. It was almost two flats. I'd have done it into two dwellings and blah blah. I'd done. I had an architect come in. Then I, I, I was a. Bear in mind, I was a receptionist at a hair salon. Right. Uh, or manager, actually, <laughs> at the Tony and Guy hair salon. I, I, I got a self-certified mortgage for about 350 grand. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you just go, how the hell? Could that, I've still, I had the thing from eight, I've, oh, what was it, of HSBC, maybe. I mean, and, I got, and it was only that I, I'd done loads of it. Obviously, it was a big risk at the time. Although it was a family sort of property, it was a, still quite a big risk for me at, at 25 or whatever I was and you look at it and go and I remember looking at certain things blah 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 anyway for whatever reason I did end up pulling out and I didn't we didn't go through through with it in the end but I was just looking at it because I, actually what happened was then the crash happened yes and I ended up selling it for 250,000 yeah. or something so I'd have lost money immediately wow. and that, and that, so I was a very lucky escape but well there you go you you, look, you've got the perfect insight into the world of a developer <laughs> yeah. um, that's what it's like yeah, yeah. Wow. And I, yeah. yeah. And even if you do make money, you know, you make money. I used to, you know, go to planning committees and you know get planning consent on a site, mm-hmm. and I know I'd be able to trade that site within a week uh, and make a large amount of money. But immediately you have, you have this sort of moment of euphoria, and then it's like, but when's where's the next one? Um, you know, you could go two years before you see your next payday. Um, So, um, and uh, the trouble with property, and you've you've just touched on it, it, it's property and development, it it, it attracts everybody. And I've never understood this because you were a hairdresser and you fancied doing a bit of property development. (laughs) Now- Watch too much Sarah Beanie. (laughs) Imagine if I'd have said that the other way. I'm a property developer, can I cut your hair? <laughs> Would you let me loose on your hair? You know, it's yeah. it's not. It takes years of experience, yeah. and um, but it is. It's a funny industry. It attracts everybody into it, and I've seen lots of people make um, big, big, you know, mistakes and failures. Because do, do you think prior to obviously prior to the bank, it was just like people were getting hundred and thirty percent mortgages yes. and crazy yeah. things like yeah. that, weren't they? See, you know, which was just you know ridiculous. But do you think it was it was that? With the programs on telly, people get thinking, oh, oh anyone, same way, oh, yeah. anyone can, oh, anyone can I, go and do I, that. I, and I hate those programs yeah, because they never, you know, they, they look at them and then they say, oh, and you sold for this amount. And it's like, well, hang on, where's the legal fees? Where's your planning costs? Yeah. Where's your engineering fees? Where's your stamp duty? Yeah. Where's your cost of money? <laughs> uh, you're paying a mortgage on that every day. You know, so the profit, what's bailed people out is inflation. And that's where people have made money in in property is because of inflation, not because of a gift that, or they've had this great insight into it. Inflation has made has watched that property go up in value, and then they think very smugly that uh, they've they've made some money in a, in a static market where there's no inflation. People often just walk away, and they're lucky to break even. So. Uh, I bet uh, it's really interesting to talk to you about because it, it is. You, I think you're right. There's that. Uh, there's a perce- again back to that perception as we were talking about earlier, isn't there? It's that perception that oh, it's got to be quite. Like, what, what's difficult about buying a property? Mm. Do it up a little bit and then sell it for mm. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. If the if the market's going up like that, but mm. th- like you said, that <laughs> one you can't predict a banking crisis. Fight yes, that yeah, that aside. Yeah. But even just in, in in a different type of market, it's, there's so much yeah. experience and skills yeah. that you'll need. Managing to cost yeah. is one thing. You've only got to watch um, uh, Grand Designs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find me 
an episode of Grand Designs where the build budget didn't run away with itself. Uh, uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll retract my statement. But and like every single one, it's like, oh, we ended up paying double. Um, we weren't expecting this or we weren't expecting this problem in the ground. These are all the things that proper house builders and developers investigate before they go ahead and purchase that, that site. So they know and they know how to manage those costs literally to the last penny. Um, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it, it, you know there is a skill yeah, in house yeah, building yeah, and yeah, development. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I, lo- I love it. You said it. You, well, I'm a property developer. I'm not going to cut you here. No, <laughs> I'm not going to make you a Michelin star meal. You're probably a good cook, I'm sure, Paul. But you're not going to. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's one of them things that you go. Yeah. Actually, what's this people just, yeah, people just see it. We've, we've got our skill sets and that. Yes. Yeah. What, what, what's been fascinating about the conversation for me, and and just I guess just the the industry that you've been in for so many years the challenges you've mentioned and and stuff like that and and the risk the risk element for me is what mm. i guess as, as a as a business owner i'm running my own for 15 years nearly different businesses I, obviously i've got a, a, a element of risk there but just I, I think just talking to you that the level is so much higher mm. Be just being in, yes. in 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 property as a as a whole as a developer land whatever whatever development you're in that element of risk and that like I could almost feel like as you're telling me about the, them times and the types of money that could potentially be involved in mm. that you feel you're like, okay, bloody hell like I'm worrying about a few grand coming in to pay X Y and Z or yeah. whatever that looks yeah. like so have that where you go I'm, I'm this this could go, if this goes wonky, I've lost. Yeah. Could it's it's, it's huge, it. yeah. And that's what you've got to understand your industry. Yeah. I could not do what you do. Yeah. There's no way I wouldn't know where to start. I'd be busting three months. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is. It's uh, but but the training, yeah. full circle yeah. back yeah. where I had Crest Homes. That it was all about risk elimination, risk exposure. Mm. So we had uh, it was like a six-page checklist. And we had every item and you had to be able to defend every single item with probably 30 items on each page before that board would support that deal going through. So what they taught me was how to approach every business opportunity Mm. and how to understand where the risk was and then interrogate it. Mm. Uh, And then that would give you your answer whether you should go ahead or not. Uh, I wonder whether, and I guess I'm just, but just, F- f- the way your your mindset and your your brain's been trained, I guess within so within that industry as a whole, but actually just from business in general, just the process and the way your your mindset would work would 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 work with potentially other businesses as well in regards to yes. just looking at looking at a problem, uh, trying to find a solution, mm. and, and I guess just you. You must just clearly have quite an analytical brain. In yeah, regard, in I, I do. That. Yeah, it's it's having that instinct of, mm. of spotting where the problem is mm. um, and, and the barriers that that could be put in its way. Um, so yeah, I do think I've been Got fortunate enough to to sort of nurture yeah. those 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 skills. Um, whether they were a gift that came with dyslexia or I don't I don't yeah, know yeah, or, or whether yeah, yeah. they're just things I've learned on the way I think the things I, I learned on the mate. way yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um, but yeah the, the, it's it's, uh, it's 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 done me well yeah. so far touch wood <laughs> yeah <laughs> just touching on risk and challenges all of them things that we've sort of alluded to over the, and just before we go into the final life in 60 seconds where we discuss success the other element of success would be failure Mm. To, what's your relationship like with failure? And it's be- better now. Um, I'm very competitive. Mm. Um, so in in sports that I've done in my adult life, um, where I've been very competitive, uh, I, I would be guilty of being the bad loser. <laughs> um, I've got better with that. and And you see failure as a learning opportunity you'll, you'll learn mm. more from failure than you will from success yeah. um so yeah I'm, I'm better i'm calmer about it so i would see but 
you know, fortunately, with the type of business that I've now created, failure for me would n- would not be would be not being able to convince a solicitor to to use our service. Mm. Um, I somewhere I failed in in convincing them that I'm here to help them, mm. um, um, not create a burden to to them. So mm. so that's the only type of failure I now have. Mm. Um, but failure with a property deal where I failed to get planning permission, uh, oh, I, I could be Mr. Grumpy. You know, I would be the one going out and, you know, looking for a cat to kick. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's, uh, um, uh, yeah, I used to not deal with it very well, yeah. but I'm better now. <laughs> Fair enough. And then, oh, and then I just want to, something I always discuss as well, um, work-life balance. What, did, what does, cause especially just touching on that as well about, <laughs> Mr. Kwan, where things mm-hmm. haven't quite gone. Well, uh, uh, what are you like? I guess now, but and and let's go back as well when you was property developing more, buying and selling land. What, what's your work-life balance like? Were you able to switch off? Would you? It, w- yeah, or? one of the other kind things about the industry that I went at when I was just buying and selling mm. land, and I'd left the corporate world, mm. and I suddenly realised that the parts of the day that you need to do, the things you really need to do that are effective, Mm. that will change the result of your business, are very small. It's not that form-filling for for headquarters somewhere else that's asking you to predict what what, what your VAT expenditure is going to be on land and, and planning fees over the next six months. The amount of paperwork in corporate world that exists that is a barrier to getting the job done is massive. Mm-hmm. So suddenly I found, working for myself, I could actually do my working day in a couple of hours. Um, so I didn't have to work very hard at all. I used to have this very simple rule. If it makes a difference to my business, I will do it. If it doesn't, I won't. So if I have a phone call from someone that's not going to make effect for my business and I don't need to speak to them, I wouldn't phone them back. It, it, it would be that it sounds rude no, no. but but if you know they were pitching for for so and so if i didn't need their service or whatever i just wouldn't phone them back i would literally just focus on what would make a difference to the business what can i do today that moves me forward and it was that um that simple rule and i also had a simple rule of prospecting when i was prospecting for new sites um i was not allowed to leave my office until i had made at least one prospect that day because that means i'm going to be doing over a four week period i'm going to be making 20 prospects and and it it should throw a lot of mud against a wall some of it will stick and if you do 20 Uh, every every month then over a year you've done 240 um, you're going to get some deals from that so prospecting every day uh, and having a simple attitude to what is effective so that allowed me to have a two-hour working day and beautifully at the time my kids were very young I could spend lots of time with them in the summer holidays we had horses I spent a lot of time with the horses and I would get up early with the kids take them to the horses we'd ride them exercise them then I'd drop them off at school pick them up from school back with the horses Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to spend time with my kids growing up because of that business I was in Um, Ironically, now we've got Dev Assist and we're employing lots of people and, you know, it, it needs you there a, a lot more. Um, so I wouldn't be able to do that. But, but um, again, it's where life has been very kind to me when I see people getting on the train at 7 o'clock in the morning and you know they're not going to be back till 8 o'clock. I've never had that life. Um, and uh, very lucky. Very lucky. So lucky. But you, you, you've, you've created that life for yourself, right? You, you've yes. got into an yeah. industry, you've created, you know, like you said, the, some of the things, we, we've talked a lot about mm. some of the challenges you face yeah. and some of the risks that you've yeah, yeah. been in and the positions that you've been yeah. in that some people would just not be comfortable in that and wouldn't no. want to be, uh, have gone through that. But one thing I really take from that, which is really valuable, certainly some, someone like me, I guess, is a couple of key things. How focused you see then to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work in them two hours and I'm going to, and and a key thing for me is the this is not going to benefit my business as I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah. As simple as that. Yeah. But that's such a. Cause I'm I, look, I'm one of my 
probably worst tra- worst tra- can be sometimes a people pleaser I find it very difficult to say no to people yeah, yeah. so you do end up doing lots of things well don't phone them back yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't have to say no <laughs> stop. mate mate I'm making yeah, notes yeah. on this I'm making, but it but that that is it that's such a such a valuable lesson to anyone listening to any business owners out there that maybe do do yeah. them things because oh, you can and I'll, I'll hold my hands up and go oh, I'm guilty of it sometimes you can be uh, I'm a, a busy fool yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Look out, and people go to me oh god you're everywhere you're doing this and yeah I'm doing all these things and it seems the perce- again back to perception you could look on social media I mean, you can see certain things you go oh, god he's doing all these look how busy he's everywhere he's doing all these things and actually then you go but you strip that back and look at Actually, am I just be? Are you being a busy for what am I doing? Uh, is this meeting that I'm doing today is that taking my business forward? Yeah. Is it benefiting what I'm trying to do as a whole? No. Okay. Why am I doing that then? Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get better at that. Like, this last few months, I'm trying to look at and listening to you talk. Actually, it's really hit home for me, and yeah. I'm sure it will for many listeners. I think being in business as a whole, what am I doing today? That is benefiting my business. Yes. And if it's not, then why am I doing it? Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't ring. Don't ring them back. No. Don't ring them <laughs> okay. back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And you. Cause, and you've obviously the the whole switching off and the work not benefiting. You, I know you, you. We've spoke about it before with the horses, but yes. it's a polo as well. Aren't you? Polo but, was my big thing. Yeah, and it, and it, it, I, I don't play anymore, but yeah. I've still got. Two of my, I used to have nine horses, and now I'm down to down to two retirees. But uh, mm. I love horses, yeah. and, and I love polo. It's a, it's a beautiful game. You know, it's, it's the only game I can really think of where, you know, uh, man and beast play as one, mm. and and that horse is 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 as as so important, more important than you, mm. you know, trying to miss the ball. It's, <laughs> uh, um, but it, it's it's a beautiful game. It's it's a misunderstood game because a lot of people see it as oh, it's just full of all the posh and the royalty, and and it's not. It's a farmer's game, uh, mm. and the the level of people. Um, uh, I remember one game I was playing, and on the opposite side. Uh, the, the team was made up of one one was a prince and one was a prostitute and and that that was how diverse she was a high level prostitute yeah. I might <laughs> add but 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 nevertheless that's how diverse it was wow. you you had people who were farmers that were playing it um, mm. uh, and it, it is it's a beautiful beautiful game and uh, yeah it was a big part but one of uh, there was two reasons I stopped playing one when you fell off I started breaking bones rather than just getting bruises mm. uh, and I realized that it, I'd got that to that time of life where it's time to, to to quit and you know having a broken bone is not so good for business when you can't go to work yeah, um, sure, sure, sure. and and equally it was back we you know we touched on the failure uh, I had a very regular team that that we'd put together and we mm. would play and if I lost I, I came off the pitch um, Feeling really grumpy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I was, and I realised I've lost the lost the pleasure. Mm. This is you know this is costing a lot of money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to do yeah, this, yeah. and <laughs> and if I'm coming off grumpy, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that 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 was my reasons for for, for stopping, yeah, yeah. and now I just enjoy watching it and and being with the horses. You know yeah, they're yeah, yeah. they're a great therapy horses. Yeah. Um, just being with them in a field is uh, uh, an absolute pleasure yeah. uh, for for me. Love that. Yeah, did, did the kids play polo? They did, and that yeah. was one of the lovely things I, I have about their w- watching them grow up. Uh, pony club, uh, pony club polo, mm. and used to have my big lorry, and you know we used to pack it up with tents and all sorts. And I used to take them uh, on the pony club tour, which would go all around the country to mm. various pony polo clubs where they would play and compete against other other po- uh, uh, pony clubs. And um, oh, it was just you know I was so lucky to be that dad that could take them Um, and it it was a beautiful childhood for them and yeah loved it absolutely loved it and and they both did very well Um, again you know it shows uh, Toby my son he he um, he won a won a national award uh, which was was the Rupert Thornelow uh, Cup um, as a he he was a a very senior um, officer in in the Welsh Guards Mm. and he, he lost his life in Afghanistan and his firm family uh, put this cup together for 
the country's most promising player and and Toby he won it at, at a very very early young age and and that got him into the young England development squad and and again you know that's even at that young age I could see that gritty determination that Toby had when he was competing yeah. that I've got this ball and I'm going to take it to goal um, so and my daughter was equally she was she was uh, a beautiful beautiful rider she really read the horse mm. very very kindly and nicely um, and and she would get through to the national finals unfortunately she lost in the national finals but uh, but nevertheless she got there uh, and she did score so uh, um, so yeah I saw it in my kids so yeah I was again so so lucky and that was back to that working day because I could have that two hour working day and spend the rest of the time with the horses with the kids and and yeah it was a, a magical time huh? a beautiful beautiful part of, of my life and and uh, maybe I'll see it with grandchildren because I've got a grandchild coming in January yeah I saw uh, yeah. God, yeah so yeah, um, yeah, yeah so maybe I'll get the chance to see uh, see my grandchild go through that process as well I love that I love that amazing um Right, look, we're, cu- we're coming. We're coming just t- towards the end. What, just before I ask the last question, I want like, the, the, your dad's business. Is that is your brother still running that? Is that still going? No, no? Um, Mark um, opted out. Eventually, it's a very tough business bakery, mm. and it wasn't good for for Mark's. Uh, health, despite his his gift and his talent, and he really is talented. You know, he's um, but he he actually works for Devasis now. Right. Uh, yeah, so. Um, um, and he's brilliant because yeah. Mark is, he's such a hard grafter. Uh, yeah. he, he, he works super hard. Um, he's got a great eye for, for detail. Um, and I saw my brother looking quite unwell with the horrible hours that he was working in the bakery. Yeah. And it was time. And so and I had a chat and said, look, you know, why don't you come out and yeah. do a nice, easy, soft nine to five job? Um, I can give you that opportunity and, you know, you'll be looked after because we're, we're brothers and, yeah. Um, and yeah, and he's now a vital part of our team. So it's, it's yeah. lovely. Amazing. Amazing. And, uh, so when, when, we, when we touch on then success, so we're going to, uh, it's our final life in 60 seconds. And again, probably the essence of the podcast is de- trying to define what success is, which is mm. different for everyone. Right? But so wh- where you've been, where you are now, where you going? How do you define success? Oh, um, success. I suppose bedtime. At the end of each day, have I made a difference? Have I made a difference? Did, did something happen today that made today worthwhile, or did I just plod? Did I just do what I did yesterday and you know live in that monotonous sort of? Uh, so yeah, it just it's back to focusing on those key things. If there's something today that's going to make me laugh, make me smile, make someone else laugh or smile, um, or make a difference to the business, do it. And can you, at the end of each night, uh, before you nod off to sleep, tell yourself that and say, yeah, I, I, I made a difference today. Um, I've had a good day. I know today. I will have that feeling because we've had a great morning. Um, I've got a lovely uh, chap that I've got to go and meet next who we're going to have a nice lunch and, and he's going to be a, a really important part of my business going going forward. Um, and I can't wait to, for, for that. So I'm going to be able to go to bed today um, with, with, yeah, I've achieved. I've, I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. today. It's been great fun and I've made a difference. I love that. I really love that. Uh, and I, 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 you definitely have made it. I'm sure. Like even just, even just to me, like listening to your story and 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 the way that you've gone about running different businesses and the different levels and all all sorts that you've been in, I've certainly taken a lot away. And I know that I know that a lot of listeners will as well. From a, just from a, like just from a business and an entrepreneurial journey and and the story and and just taking little bits out. There's there's especially when when we relate it to risk. I, like I say, I can. I guess feel part of me feels a little bit more comfortable in the sense of whatever position I'm in at the moment. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll be all, I'll be all right. We'll be all right. Have that op- op- optimistic attitude, which I've always obviously had, but but just going because that that level of risk is not as maybe as high as what potentially you've been through over that over that time. I. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't understand your business as well yeah, as yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, but yeah, we all have different levels. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I perhaps have a, yeah. uh, a higher. I've had people argue with me and say, you know, you, you, you're, you're foolish with the levels of risk that you took in the past. Um, but I would like to say that they work. They're, they're calculated. Yeah, you're, you're not yeah, going yeah, to a course. table throwing dice. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you know where the dice are weighted, yeah, yeah, uh, and and that's yeah. So they, you, you, you've you've just got to properly investigate and eliminate. What, 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 what's the in, in, in relation to just touching again on that part of success? Like you growing up and seeing your dad run that business, obviously financially successful put you through mm. you know mm. private education and that level in, in your head was that your I'm going to get to that point financially yeah. to, to as a measurement of your success or it was certainly my benchmark but but there was another part to that story which I didn't touch on and that was watching um, a dreadful moment in in our family's life which was uh, the bakery um, there was a fire and mm. the bakery plant burnt down literally to the ground mm. overnight. Uh, and it was over a, a, a long bank holiday weekend. So the fire had sort of 12 hours head start in a bakery. You can imagine how dry yeah. as a bone that was. It just ripped through the main production. So my dad's income disappeared overnight. He was relying on insurance and advice and my dad lost his wealth overnight. Um, and watching my dad cope with that uh, was amazing how he could still in time go back and laugh and be the jovial sort of you know center of attention that, that, that he could be um, that was a big lesson so you know so I've watched how you know n never be arrogant you know you're you're literally you're, you're only one moment away from from failure so mm. success is you've got to be careful to you know People a thousand times bigger than me have gone bust, mm. um, and we still watch them go bust. You know, every, every, every How week. How when that happened with the bakery? I was uh, probably a late teenager. Really? Yeah, um, and uh, it was just awful because you know, Dad had gone from living a beautiful life with beautiful cars, doing beautiful things, to having no income at all, um, and relying on an insurance company to bail you out which of course they don't. We all know what insurance companies are like yeah. when it comes to the payout. Um, it was a big, big fight. Um, so yeah, watching my father go through that was, um, that was tough. Um, and for him to be able to bounce back with uh, a modest uh, level of wealth um, compared to what he had um, you know, he kept the bakery after it, that. Eventually, it, it, it did. Come, it did. It, it went back, and and my brother and my sister, my big sister, went mm. into it. My other sister, Mandy, she, she was in worked in the NHS. Um, um, but yeah, so watching them. But the, my brother and sister went back into that world mm. of of baking and and confectionery. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's it's a tough tough, tough yeah, industry yeah, yeah, when you're competing sure. with supermarkets. Um, uh, you've got to be very, very niche, very boutique to, to be successful in that that that, that trade. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, that was probably the end of my dad's career, uh, really. And, and to some extent, the end of him, really, because he did deteriorate after that level of um, uh, trauma mm. uh, that, that came across him. So, yeah, that, that, you know, that was a big lesson to observe, yeah. um, I hope. I never have to, yeah. you know, go through that. But it's certainly something I've thought about in business. And, and I have, you know, for us, we're fortunate these days where we can put everything on a cloud. And if my headquarters <laughs> went up in smoke uh, overnight, mm -hmm. I know I can be trading tomorrow. Um, and thinking about those insurances that you take out every year that you probably don't go through and read as properly as you should. You know, yeah. those, are, again, they're, they're, they're lessons I've learned from my father. Mm -hmm. On, on what to do because he didn't do them no. he didn't do that and, and that cost him dearly yeah, well. well I guess you I guess looking at like you said after I guess being in that position and you said about him maybe deteriorating and 
because potentially that the the bakery was his main purpose and if that's yeah. taken away he, he was at that time of life where he was too old yeah. to go and start again yeah um sure. and you know he he had he had to retire um, he retired comfortably by most people's standards. So yeah, I'm, sure. you know, I'm not selling a big sob story here. Yeah, sure, sure. He did okay, but it wasn't what he had. So to step back and to do it as gracefully as he did, mm. and still with uh, an, uh, such an element of, of naughtiness and fun that, that still remained, and his adoration of all his grandchildren, mm. um, um, yeah, he, he, he did very, very well. Yeah. Very well to to come back from it as he did, um, but yeah, big yeah, lessons yeah. that I learned yeah, from yeah, it yeah, as, sure. as as well. Sure. And again, still back to your definition of success and what difference have I made today? And mm. uh, and uh, and then, like you said, even taking that potential financial wealth out of the. Because a lot, it's, lot of yeah. success is measured by financial yes, status. Yes, it is, and, and, and it's not. Uh, it's that isn't the thing. Not, yeah. You know, I love making money, and yeah. I love having spare money to do lovely, pleasurable yeah. things. Yeah. But it is ultimately going to bed with a smile on your face, yeah. and and that's what makes a difference. And that's why COVID was so tough because I wasn't seeing my friends, I wasn't seeing my my my, my business friends who are, yeah. you know, I probably see more of than, than my, <laughs> yeah. my other friends yeah. outside of, of, of work. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's so important and, and being able to socialize um, and have fun, put a yeah. smile on your face. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it's, uh, I, I walked the dogs yesterday and I walked past this woman who just had the saddest face and she was grumpy and didn't like the fact that my dog was barking and I said good afternoon to her and she just ignored me and I was like that's not a life that's mm. not living and it, you know, it, it marks my day because mm. I thought why is she so sad and grumpy yeah. there's, there's a lot to there's a lot to smile about yeah agreed agreed mm. mate final one what does the future hold for you um there will come a time where I will sell Devasist, and I will retire. Mm -hmm. I would still, I would never retire as my father did, where he literally hung up his apron. Mm -hmm. um, I would still stay involved in business. I will t to my dying day. Yeah. Um, it's it's too important. I love the, the social interaction uh, with people. Um, and so we need a purpose one. Yeah, yeah. I, I would Stop. absolutely need need a purpose. Um, I would probably like to have. Uh, a lot more land where I could become a gentleman farmer and bring up some pigs and <laughs> have my horses and, and all and my chickens and all the other <laughs> things that I sort of grew up with. Um, that that's where I would be like, and travel. I love travel. Mm -hmm. Love meeting new people, new cultures, and mm -hmm. new worlds. So um, I would love to spend more time uh, being very non-green and flying around the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mate. Well, listen. Um, Really, really grateful for, for you coming on. It's been a lovely, fascinating, insightful conversation as I, as I, as I knew it would be. And um, from from sitting there having a coffee with you in Soho House to, to now, I just I, I knew it would be like that. So I'm, I'm really grateful. It's been brilliant chatting to you and oh, it's fascinating to hear the, your journey and, and what's happened with Deb Assist and how it's grown. And, That's and, very kind. Thank um, you. Really, really, really excited to see where it continues to grow and, and, well, let's hope and what so. happens, I'm sure. So um, I wish you continued success. But and listen, you. thank you for your time. It's been a brilliant conversation. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. And that, as they say, is a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>